Hi, Cat's Cradle here. You'll have to pardon the noise outside, but Paladin Prepper is weed eating. Uh, earlier in the week, um, I had a really busy night and wanted to provide a good fill, meal for my family, but not to have to buy fast food. So when I was in the grocery store, I saw that they had, you can see it says uh, $4.98 here, the rotisserie chicken was on sale and I thought well that's what I would do. I'll pick up a chicken and it'll be easy for me to throw a side dish together and I'll have dinner. Well, uh, Paladin Prepper likes the breast so he ate uh, the breast on this side. Um, Prepper A ate a leg and a thigh. I ate a leg and a thigh and then I had the two wings for lunch the next day. So what's left is one breast and it's going to be dinner tonight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this up uh, pretty finely and then here's the other thing I'm going to be using tonight. These are freeze-dried peas. Here they are. They're quite delicious just like this. They're feather, they're, they're feather light. It's almost like feeling styrofoam beads. They're just incredibly light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover them with boiling water out of my boiling water kettle. Well, they really kind of float. There's no such thing as covering them. But just put enough water and they will begin to puff up and rehydrate and turn green almost before your very eyes. Let me see if I can stir this with my knife a little bit here. Yep, didn't take long. And they're looking beautiful already. So I'm going to go ahead and debone this breast and cut it up a little bit. And then when I'm ready to press on with my meal, I'll show you what it's going to be. All right, I'm back. I have my my lowly little chicken breast cut up. You can see there's a little gel down there, a little broth. That's great. I'm going to use that too. I'm the happiest person in the world because since I didn't cook this chicken, I didn't have any chicken fat. And I went to look in the freezer because I always save it and I didn't have any there either. Uh, I haven't boiled a chicken in a long time, but I was in my refrigerator and I found some. So what I'm going to use is about three tablespoons. Okay? I know that I know that's good stuff. Have I, got enough? I think I've got enough. I know that's good stuff because I cooked the chicken it came off of. It's been uh, I just pour my chicken fat through the strainer. You can see it looks like butter. But especially if you're using chicken breast, I, I really seem like a chicken breast hater. And if I do it's because I am. I don't like the chicken breast. And if I'm going to eat it, then it has to be flavored up a little bit. I think the dark meat has much more flavor. I think this is just, I don't care for it. I know people love it, and that's okay. Sometimes if it's grilled, I can tolerate it. But, um, so here's what I'm doing. If you don't have chicken fat, just say you only have a rotisserie chicken like I'm showing you. You could use uh, maybe like a tablespoon of bacon drippings and two tablespoons of, of butter. Uh, that would work. I know I want three tablespoons because I want to end up with three cups of liquid. And so the rule is a tablespoon of fat and a tablespoon of flour per cup of liquid, whatever you're going to use. So here's what's going to go in. I'm also, that's some finely diced onion. I also am not very fond of celery, so I cut it very, very small to go in here. There's something about celery and chicken. Uh, that just go very well together. It goes well in chicken soup. It goes well in what I'm making tonight. I guess I'll go ahead and tell you it's going to be cream chicken on biscuits. It also goes well in chicken salad. But this cream chicken on biscuits, other than the chicken and the rehydrated green peas, that's the only uh, texture I want to feel. I don't want to feel the onion and the celery. So I am going to wilt this down until it's very, very soft. And then when it's soft, I'll bring you back to finish this up and I'll do all of that in real time so that you can see after the vegetables are softened how quickly it comes together. And this is only going to take about five minutes. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, the veggies are sweated down. I'm going to put about three tablespoons of flour in there. I'm going to stir it and see where I am. You're going to make a roux here, but not, not dark. You just want to just cook the flour just a little bit. So it doesn't taste raw. Yeah, you don't want it to taste raw. Okay, so it's exactly, exactly three tablespoons of flour. And then I'm going to add about three cups of liquid. This is probably two. And that is 
stock from another cut of meat I cooked this week. You see it's really gelatinous. It just melts right down. And you can put the cold. When you're making a roux like that, the flour and veggies and fat were all hot. The liquid that goes in after that is cold. And I just stir it with a whisk. I have no trouble with it clumping. I'm going to want a little more liquid, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drain the flavorful uh, water, rehydrating water, off my peas. That goes in. If I need more, I'll do a little water. I'm going to fill my water pitcher. Get a little water here. Now, if you don't have celery, don't worry about that. I'm going to move my light for just a minute. Don't worry about that. You can use celery seed or a little bit of celery salt. Here comes the light back. I'm going to use just, since I'm going to add a little bit of water, I'm going to put just a little bit of, yeah, just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon of uh, this Shirley J's bouillon. I really like it. And my water pitcher is my water pitcher is draining some water for me, so I'm going to add that in. This is coming up to heat. I can see the steam coming off of it. You probably can too. Let me go ahead while I'm waiting on my water. I'll pepper it. Smells good. It does smell good. If you don't like the little black specks of pepper, you can use white pepper in this. There's something healing about this combination of chicken and broth and celery and onion. It's just, it's just healing. Okay, I think I have enough water in my water pitcher to put a little in here. That's good. I'll probably now have about three cups of liquid total. You'll have to get uh, put some salt in. Let me grab some salt. It's really, it's really advisable to taste at this point to see how much salt you need. Yeah, not much. Because if your um, if your broth is salty, then you probably don't need it. And I used a little bouillon, and that's salty too. I slowed it down when I added the extra water, but it'll come right back up here. You know, I don't do this because I don't have enough meat in the house, and I don't do it necessarily because I'm trying to save money, although it really does. I'm doing it because it's a frugal thing to do, and one big chicken breast and a delicious broth like this really is enough to feed the three of us. And in so doing, I'm doing what women have done for centuries, which is try to stretch out a little piece of meat with a simple gravy and putting it on some type of bread to feed a hungry family. Women have done that uh, for centuries. And it's good practice for me. And we don't need to eat a lot of meat. In fact, often here, at our table, uh, meal it, uh, meat is not the star. It is, you know, it's the side dish. And just personally, I think we consume way too much meat anyway. And who wants to consume uh, that much now that you buy at the grocery store when it's loaded with hormones? But I'm not going to get on that. This is a happy video about a delicious uh, cream chicken on biscuit. Right, Prep Rice? That's right. It's going to be happy. Her little, li her little lips are stained with mulberries. What were you doing? I've been go going to every mulberry bush I can find and eating as many mulberries as I can. And I was full about an hour, hour and a half ago. From full from eating delicious purple mulberries. And my hands were stained uh, red and purple for probably about two hours. 
She loves mulberries. Okay, my whisk, I'm feeling in my whisk that it's thickening now. As soon as it comes to a boil, it will be as thick as it's going to get unless you just cook it for a very long time and evaporate a lot of liquid out of it. So I can tell as soon as it starts to boil if it's right. Uh, Prepper A is giving me the sign that we're running out of time on the camera, so let her go delete a couple of files and then we'll come right back. Okay, here we are. You can see it's, can you see in there, it's come to a full rolling boil. At that point, I'm going to turn my heat down. I'm going to put my chicken in because I want it to get moisturized. <laughs> put on my chicken breast. Okay. Yeah, and I just cut it up right in that. Why waste another dish? And so I'm just going to let this just just mosey here for just a few minutes while I throw my biscuits together. And then I'll come right back. This is really, really low, uh, so I'll be right back. All right, I just poured the peas in and have stirred them around a little bit. You don't really need for them to, to cook. Uh, they just need to be heated up. So let me get over here a biscuit for this preparation. Looks so good. Yes, they are square biscuits. Oh, I took the lid right off that one. Well, let's get a. This will do for a taste test. Uh, if I'm cooking in a square pan, lots of times I will just cook square biscuits. It's easier. I know exactly how they are going to fit in there. Let's open her up a biscuit. Well, it's probably raw. It tastes the same. <laughs> it tastes exactly the same. We're going to cover this with a little bit of delicious gravy. We do the peas because she loves the peas in there. Mm -hmm. And it's a little looser than I like, but it's still going to be delicious. Let me take the camera from you and you can taste. This is one of my favorite meal. Yeah, hold it up because it's going to be really hot. And if you wanted a wider gravy, I mean you could use, instead of broth, you could use some milk in there or cream. It's really hot. Be careful. Oh, that's so good. Well, wait till you're finished chewing, for heaven's sakes. Love it. Oh, it's so awesome. I love it. I love the creaminess and the biscuits. Cass Crinnell makes outstanding biscuits. And I love the richness of the chicken and the broth and, and the peas are an awesome touch. Well, you're just like your brother. I have a grown son who's married. And his favorite food in the world is cream chicken on biscuits. And my grandmother made it as good as anybody. She always made sourdough biscuits. And I could make cream chicken on biscuits, but I never made it for him because it was such a treat for her to make it for him. And she would say when she heard he was coming, what do you want me to make? And he'd say, oh, cream chicken on biscuits. And, and so she would have it waiting for him. And he loves it to this day. But she's gone, so now I make it. And now you know how to make it. It's more of a concept. Uh, video here for you to know how to make a a little bit of a, a roux and thin it out with some meat broth, add a little bit of meat to it, and make a meal that will go a long way. It's a good thing to know how to do. Don't you think, Prepare? Definitely. All right. Catch Cradle here, and Prepare. Take care, y'all.